Hello everyone, this is Amanda J.P. Brown and I am a contributing author of Phoenix Rising and I am here for the masterclass Through the Darkness, Finding Purpose in Times of Adversity. And today we are going to talk a little bit about adversity, kind of going through the process of grief and loss and also really what you can do in order to grow as an individual. So one, I would love to know where you are from and feel free to drop comments below. If you have questions as we go along, I will do my best to answer them. And if we do not get to something during today's session, then I will go ahead and kind of we'll have a conversation in the comments. So thank you all for being here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So one of the things that we all go through in life is adversity. There are all kinds of adversities from death to trauma to relationships ending. And if you read the book, um, Phoenix Rising, you will know my chapter is really about this process of a relationship ending and growing and healing through this divorce. And so it's really important to see that while adversity can cause a strife and we can spiral down holes, it is um, also something that can really highlight um, how powerful and amazing we are. Hello, Beatrice, thank you. I'm so glad to be with you live. Um, one of the things that has always stuck with me is the Chinese proverb about adversity, that it elicits talents we would otherwise, um, it, it goes, sorry, excuse me, adversity elicits talents we otherwise would have stayed dormant. So they would not have come through without some of the things we go through in life. We wouldn't discover what we're made of, how much courage we have, how much strength we have. And so really while adversity can cause us to go through spirals of self-doubt, self-judgment, fear, it can also help highlight some really powerful things about ourselves. And a couple of things that I just want to make sure that we talk about today are the, um, let me go back to my notes. I have some notes, so just bear with me back and forth, is that we talk about the fa phases of grief and loss. So part of what happens is through grief and loss, we go through adversity, things change in our life. Things weren't the way they used to be. And so if you've ever been through a transition, I'd love you just to give me a high five or a, you know, a heart, something to let me know that you've experienced a challenge in your life. And that maybe you went through some of these and you probably went through all of them, but there's different stages. And some they say there's five, some they say there's seven. We're gonna review the seven stages because it really highlights that perpetual growth that we have through adversity. And the first experience when something really bad happens, and I'll just use my example of my marriage ending, is there's this whole um, shock and denial that comes through is like, I can't believe this happened. Is this really happening? Um, what the hell? Uh, it is so, so um, dis like you're in disbelief. Like, is this real? And so this is also sometimes where we want to deny what's happening. So maybe we see, you know, for me, I saw the signs of the relationship ending for years, but I, I deny that it was happening. I avoided it, which just, because I didn't want to deal with the pain. I didn't want to go through the process of, you know, everything that happens when you go through change and adversity and uncoupling and, and that piece of the relationship. So I avoided a lot of things. Um, from the shock and denial, you're going to really go into a pause, like when it's happening, pain and guilt. So you're going to be asking questions like, why was I so stupid to stay this long? At least that was one of my questions. Um, how could I have let this happen? Why didn't I see the signs? Why is this happening to me? You're going to have all this stuff come up. This is where we want to often numb out, question what we did wrong, 
blame ourselves for what happened. And all of these things are normal and we go through this process. So why, why I'm talking about this is because it's really important that we normalize some of this stuff so we don't feel like we're alone. Because when we're in times of adversity, often we feel alone, we feel scared, we feel like nobody understands, maybe we're carrying shame, self-doubt. And so then we don't talk about it because nobody knows. And so, oh my gosh, they'll judge me. Nobody will want me. I'll be rejected. So we sit with ourselves in these spirals that just go in our head. And, and so sometimes we just need to numb out. And this is where we also, you know, um, feel we need to remove things or we go through like not remove, we reminisce and go over things that we should have done that we shouldn't have done and really kind of just question ourselves. So we're really in this like kind of guilt and frustration and then we move into, and, and just so you know, this is all like happening like this. So you can go through all of these stages at different times and kind of process through one. It's not nice and pretty. It's all kind of interconnected in a big, big web. Um, yes, so many people in this situation. And if I don't get to your comment, like I said, I will come back um, because I wanna make sure we get through all the material today and I will come back and stay on and we can have a conversation in the comments. So next we're talking about anger and bargaining. Why is this happening to me? We're gonna feel really frustrated. We're gonna be angry. And sometimes we don't process through this. Sometimes we feel like we just wanna jump through it. So me, one of the things is I, it took me a really long time to get angry about my relationship ending. It took a long time for me to realize that I was pissed off that I dealt with this for so long, that I allowed this to happen in my life, that my relationship ended. And it, it was partly because I didn't want to feel that anger. And sometimes we grow up in families or as women, we're told, and even men, that you're not allowed to be angry. Like you have to, you know, be gracious and kind. And so um, sometimes anger is a really uncomfortable feeling to go through, but it is a really powerful emotion to help process through. Um, and so this is also where our frustration of not being able to control the situation, not being able to um, know what's coming next. There's a lot of ambiguity. We start maybe bargaining. We might lash out at the other person, other people. We blame them. We're cursing everyone under the sun. And we're trying to go, you know, this is where we might be saying, okay, if I do X, Y, and Z, then maybe that person will come back if it's looking in like a relationship context. So we're trying to negotiate how to make things work. Maybe we're even negotiating for ourselves what we are trying to do so we don't have to go through this again. Um, and so, but we wanna process through this. We wanna really talk, like let this kind of process happen. We wanna get angry. But then what's gonna come next is often this depression, reflection, and loneliness. This is where sadness is gonna come in. You're finally gonna realize the loss is real. I'm gonna say that again, the loss is real. It's really happened. And this can happen, you know, at any point. So for me, I really, I had moved out in January or February. We decided to get divorced in January. I moved out in February. I moved to Oregon and it didn't hit me. I mean, I knew I was getting divorced. I knew this was happening, but the loneliness and the element of depression, that reflection piece didn't really hit me until I was in Oregon sitting here going, wow, this like really happened. Whoa. And how do I feel about this? And you know, this is also where you really realize that life is never going to go back to the way it was. And we all know this from being in the pandemic right now, pre-COVID, COVID, what's post-COVID look like? We don't really know because now life is never going to look the same. When you go through an adverse thing, when you go through a traumatic thing, when you go through something that changes your life, it changes your life forever. You're never gonna go back. It's like if I crumple up this piece of paper and then I undo it, so now it's not 
you know, it still has all these marks. It still has all this stuff that impacted it. We can smooth it out, we can put books on it, but it's always going to be different than it was before. And that's absolutely what's gonna happen to us when we go through things. So part of this process is really being in that space of like honoring that. And we're gonna talk about like that as a practice to help you through these adversity times. Um, oh great, I'm glad that reference was helpful, thank you. Um, and you might in this space also catch yourself reminiscing about what was, um, what could have been. I really struggled with, you know, through the grief and loss when, when divorce happens, you're not just getting rid of the relationship and the relationship isn't just what you're losing. It's all of the hopes and dreams, all of the things that you had wished would come forward in your life, all the things that you were building. And that really, really, really is hard to let go of because it's, it's re- kind of destroying so many more things than just the relationship. It's your idea, it's your associations of who you were. Like if I'm not, you know, that man's wife or that woman's wife, who am I? Or if you're a man, their husband, like who am I when I am not this? And so you're having to redefine who you are. You're having to really look into this and you might catch yourself, you know, reminiscing about the, the good old days, and that's okay. It's absolutely okay, but for you, it's really looking at, okay, this is part of the process. This is part of understanding that grief and loss happens, that, uh, that things change, and we are going to be able to move forward as we, we kind of heal and tune into ourselves. And that's where that reflective piece starts to come in. And really, as we kind of process through this grief and loss, we have this upward turn. And this is where we really start to adjust and settle in to the reality and loss that we've experienced. Our physical symptoms of depression and grief may kind of have lessened. It's kind of like the clouds of depression are parting a little bit and we can just see a little bit of streams of sunlight. It's still not clear. We still don't know what life is gonna look like, but we're starting to see that this is going to be okay. We are going to be okay. We're going to be able to survive this. This is the state where we kind of surrender into fighting against what happened and accepting what it has happened and what is coming. And so the next stage of this is really about the acceptance and hope, you know, really leaning into our new reality. What does new reality look like as a single person in your mid 40s? Well, I'm still figuring that out, but it's interesting. And, you know, just the idea that you would be dating again or whatever that is, or what is it in, in COVID times? We can talk about that. Like, do we, are we ever not going to need masks at some point? Are we, we just don't know. So we're dealing with the reality and staying present in this moment with the uncertainty of what's going to happen, but holding hope as well. So you're kind of juggling and holding a lot of things in this. Um, you are even able to, in this phase, kind of see how this has changed you in your life. You're able to look at this from a different perspective and that's absolutely very, very important in order for growth and new expansion and um, like life to happen. So you're going to begin to understand that you can find a new path forward, a new path to live your life in a new way way and this is really really powerful because sometimes we're so focused that this is what my life was supposed to look like and now I'm sitting in this space of I have no idea what my life is going to look like and that absolutely is scary but it's also exciting so we have to remember the flip side to this space of fear and anxiety is also fear um, excitement and and can be really energizing. So just know that there's this double side to fear and anxiety of like excitement and a new possibility and growth. So it's sometimes it's choosing what you're going to lean into is really helpful. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. We're gonna get through this next phase and then we will move into the steps that you can really use in these last couple um, 
to help you move through the adversity and into purpose and going forward. Um, okay, Beatrice, beautiful way that you describe this journey. So helpful, insightful. Thank you. I'm so glad it is helpful um, and insightful. So reconstruction and processing through. So you're going to eventually end up in your life, whether you've experienced a death, whether you've overcome an illness, whether you have you know, been going through a divorce or an end of a relationship, you're going to come to a point in your life where you're reconstructing and processing. And one of the things that I've always said is sometimes things have to blow up in order to fall into place. And that is such a hard realization to understand that sometimes your life is going to get completely destroyed by what happens but it's just an opportunity for you to rebuild. Remember, adversity elicits talents that would otherwise have laid dormant. So this is really where you got a new job. Mm. Okay, um, if I lose you, I'll pop back on, but hopefully it won't do that again. This is, there's been a storm, so hopefully it won't do that. Um, this is where we start finding our purpose through the adversity. We start looking at our life in new ways. We start identifying the lessons. We start rediscovering who we are, what we enjoy, and we get to choose our way forward by reflecting on the boundaries and the our own self-reflection. Yeah, you're having storms in the Western US too. Okay, yep, absolutely. Um, so you're beginning, um, you begin taking action and planning. So planning and action is really what help happens in this reconstruction phase. So one of the things, I have been through lots of different adversities in life, just like all of you have. I have been through parental abandonment, drug addiction, um, you know, dropping out of school, toxic relationships. So we are going to constantly be evolving. And there are some really big things that are adverse and there are little things that we go through. So just remember, this isn't about um, how big or how little. This is really you kind of being able to get into some practices that help you forward in life. So the practices that we're gonna go through in the next about 30 minutes are called the hero practices. And they are um, honesty, honoring, and we'll all go through each one, empathy, exploration, realness, risk, and open-heartedness and ownership. So eight different practices. And these really are synergistic, they work together. You can enter these practices at any way. Some places you need to go in um, with two at a time in order to get to one because it can be really hard. I'm going to talk about them in a linear fashion, but believe me, they do not happen in a linear way. And if you have questions, drop it in the comments. We'll go ahead and answer as many as we can while we're here. And if not on the, at the end. Okay. So honesty, one of the things that is really, really important when we are going through adversity, when we are going through our life, is how honest we are with ourselves. It is easy for us to avoid things. It is easy for us to justify, look away, and kind of pretend like we don't see things because it's uncomfortable. And the more that we are dishonest with ourselves, the more that we do not have the relationships or the life that we want because we are not living from our truth. And so being honest with ourselves is really about opening yourself up to exploring what is true for you and how you feel. Yes, the hero's journey. And it requires you to see um, with yourself and ask your questions like, how do I feel about this? So really this is about really tuning in, looking in and asking yourself, how do I honestly feel about what's happened to me? Not how should I, how should I feel or how should I not feel, but how do I feel? And really allowing yourself to sit with what messages have I 
um, taken from this experience and what do I want this to mean in my life? So one of the things that's really important to remember is we assign meaning to things. Things happen to us and we assign meaning to it. It doesn't mean that people told us that was what that meant, and maybe they did. But there are often things like when I think about incidents with my father and the abandonment that happened, my father never said certain things. I reacted in ways because what he said, I internalized and made it something. I gave meaning to it. So some of that is really important to reflect on what meaning am I giving this? And in order to understand that so you can rewrite those stories, you can then go ahead. Um, honesty is really. Um, this slots in with a lot of the inner child. Yep. So there's a lot of inner child that work, work that happens within this. Um, and a lot of it is finding the courage to go through this. So in order to be honest, we have to be willing to be courageous to explore our deepest desires. We have to under want to understand ourselves better, you know, because every piece of who we are is a powerful piece. Every growth, every past version is a very powerful and important piece of us and our story and it makes us who we are now. So being honest about that, being open to kind of cultivating boundaries, really kind of seeing things helps us live in more alignment with our lives. Um, when we are honest, we are empowered to say and do what we need and stop doing things. Because if we aren't being honest, then we keep doing things. And I just had this um, situation with dating. Dating is a really interesting thing um, after you've been divorced and you start going back out there. And um, I have a therapist who really helps hold me accountable to see where I might need to show up more honestly or speak up for myself. But to really be able to speak up for myself, I have to have cultivated that awareness, which means I have to have given myself space to be honest with myself. Okay, practice number two is all about honoring. And honoring is really this process of accepting ourselves and really kind of valuing who we are, valuing it, the experience, self-love and gratitude. It's really hard to judge ourselves and honor ourselves at the same time because we're compassionate, we're understanding. We, um, I love the Jimi Hendrix quote that says, in order to honor ourselves, we must honor our past. So that means we can't deny what's happened to us. We can't deny the adversities we've been through in order to honor who we are and the person we're becoming or have become, we must look back and go and find some way to find gratitude for that experience. And like I said, this is not all just singling out different things. In order to find gratitude for some of this, you might have to have some empathy for yourself. And that's practice number three, comes from cultivating an understanding and acknowledgement of our own experiences. So really understanding that the experiences that we've had have helped shape us into who we were, like that piece of paper. This has shaped us and we can fold it in all kinds of different ways. We can unfold it and it's kind of the same thing for ourselves. We can try things on and then we can decide that that's not for us. This is where kindness really comes into play as well and giving yourself the benefit of the doubt. Too often we are critical of ourselves. We don't, we have a lot of empathy and grace typically for other people and not as much for who we are. And this is really where we get to practice that compassion and kindness towards ourselves. Um, in order to really find your purpose and adversity through the adversity, you need to be able to empathetically look at yourself, your story, your history, and be able to be kind to help you move forward into this next phase of your life. So this is the compassion, the acceptance, um, acceptance of things and yourself the way they are, not how you want them to be. Acceptance isn't about, well, I can accept myself when. This is really about, I accept the things as they are right now. It doesn't mean we don't work, we don't grow, we don't change things, but it means that we've accepted that and that's where that empathy is coming in. Um, it also allows us um, everything that we've done or has happened to us in our lives 
even the things that we carry shame, guilt, regret, and anger around are powerful pieces of who we are and have given us experience and knowledge of how to be within the world. And understanding that is really, really important. And this is where exploration comes in. So being able, yes, self-acceptance is so important. So this is where exploration comes in. You know, in order to really understand our experience, the meanings we've given to it, we have to be willing to go to the places that scare us. We have to be willing to explore the things we've been avoiding, the things that we have um, not wanted to look at. You know, that's kind of that whole avoidance thing. This is about self-discovery and challenging the beliefs and stories we held. It is also really um, a big thing because if I give up this belief about who I am, then who am I? So it creates a lot of uncertainty when we start unraveling the stories and then there's uncertainty, ambiguity, which is a little unnerving, but there's also possibility. And so we have to remember that with the ambiguity and the uncertainty, there's also possibility and, and a new way forward of expansion beyond what our previous mind would have led us to believe. Um, in this space, it's really important to be curious. If you think about exploring a new city, you know, a new hiking trail, you have to be curious about where you're going, open, staying open-minded, um, and you have to be open to what comes up, stay present in the moment versus like, you know, everything else. You're daring to go where you've never been. Every time you explore something, you're doing something new. So it's going to feel uncomfortable in the process. It's going to feel um, unsure, but this is also where gratitude really can come in and help you um, because you'll find the lessons in here as you're exploring. And this takes boldness and risk, and we're gonna get to risk in just a few minutes. Um, and this is, I'm gonna be honest, this is a really, really hard practice. Exploring the things that you have wanted to avoid, rewriting stories, facing yourself in new ways, sitting down and looking at the adverse and bad stuff that's happened to you in your life or the uncomfortable things, the traumas, it is not comfortable. And this, again, is why you need that empathy and even the open-heartedness in order to be able to give yourself enough love to be able to stay within this space. So this is an interwoven process to help you grow. So next practice that we'll review is realness. In order to lay down in order to show up in a real way. Um, yeah, so uncomfortable, but so powerful. Yes, exactly, Christy. Um, realness. So we are so used to putting on armor, to putting on masks, to showing up as we think people should be. And often why we do this is because we have stories about what it means to be who we are as we are. And we have learned to adapt to our environments due to experiences that we've had, due to traumas, due to just interactions with people that have shown us or we have interpreted that it's okay to be this way but not this way. So I'm gonna put on this mask or I'm gonna keep myself safe. And realness is really about taking all of that off and unapologetically, authentically showing up, knowing that you are safe knowing that it is safe to do that. And this doesn't just happen overnight. You're not just gonna be like, hey world, here I am. Although that would be badass and you will get there. Um, but this starts in little spaces. This might start with you in your journal. This might start with a one friend. This might start with somebody who's close to you that you can um, trust to hold you and to witness you. It's where being in this realness space is where we are able to take that honesty that we've looked at and really speak our truth, that we are able to speak it out loud, to talk about it, to give it words and voice. It's where we are able to drop the fear or it's not even about dropping the fear. It's really about um, walking through with the fear and sharing what we think and choosing ourselves and expressing who we are. 
And this takes a lot of courage. And this takes a lot of practice. This is uncomfortable showing up in this space. And so sometimes it's really valuable to find people who you admire, who you've watched do this, and use them to help guide you through that as inspiration. Um, you're going to feel uncomfortable because you are starting to show up in ways that are different. So for me, recently I had to have a discussion with somebody about um, how something made me feel. And I'll be honest, that's not always easy for me to talk about how I didn't like something. I have a fear that if I speak up and share my um, expectations or how I wanna be treated in relationships, that I will be rejected. And so to say, I didn't like that when this happened and this is what I would like to happen is hard. But if I'm not real with that other person, they never have the opportunity to learn or grow um, and to be aware of what is important to me. And so realness is really about showing up authentically to people so they can um, really get to see who you are. Okay, so risk, three more, and then we'll kind of go through some questions and just how do you, how do you use these to help yourself? Um, so risk, so here goes nothing. It's that space of like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just going to go for it. And this is daring to challenge yourself, being vulnerable and braving beyond what you're familiar with. All of these things are you like getting honest with yourself, honoring who you are, finding empathy, exploration, all requires you to take a risk, to take chances, to do something you've never done before, showing up real. It's really tapping into your courage and your faith and daring to go beyond what you know and what you can see. And this is really, really powerful because you're saying, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that it's going to be different. And this is believing that something else is possible for you. And when you're going through something and adversity has happened, you don't know what's coming next. And so this allows you to say something else is possible and I believe that's true. And you know, one of the ways that you can really step into this space is by asking yourself, what scares me? What scares me? So yesterday for me, it was, well, what scares me was having a conversation with somebody, telling them how I feel about what happened and what I need. And so how did I do that? Well, you know, I talked about it. I said, hey, can you have a conversation? Are you open to hearing this? Because I need to share it. And they were like, yep, and I did. And I was nervous and I survived. I'm here today. So this is really about looking what scares me and how can I work through that today? What little step can I take to face this? And so sometimes this is different every day and it doesn't look like anything else. What is a risk and what requires you to take risks may be very different than someone else. So this is also really important not to judge yourself um, based on other people. Okay, two more practices. Um, we've got open heartedness. So this is all about love and acceptance of yourself, um, treating yourself the way you want to be treated. It's really, really important. We have been socialized to treat people the way we want to be treated, but often we do not treat ourselves how we want to be treated. And then we are left frustrated and irritated when nobody treats us how we want to be treated. We're sold this idea that if we treat them the certain way that they will reciprocate that, but that is not true. That does not always happen. Um, so this is really about making sure that you're clear, that you are opening your heart to what you need, that you are releasing your own self judgments and your criticism, that you are welcoming all aspects of yourself and your story. And this is really important to hold the belief around, you are not what you did or what, you, what happened to you, you are so much more. And so really being able to open your heart and feel that and really wrap that around you when you've been through times of adversity, when bad things have happened in your life, is reminding yourself that you are not what you did nor what happened to you. You are so much more. Okay, ownership. 
last one. And then if you have questions, I'll scroll through and we'll kind of talk about how do we weave into this to find our purpose. So um, ownership is all about owning your perception. So this is not being responsible for other people's actions. We are not responsible for their actions. We are not responsible for the things they do to us. We are not responsible for being victimized. We are responsible for our perceptions. We are responsible to see the choices that we have now. We are, it is important for us to know the difference between being victimized and feeding into the victim mentality and martyrdom. And so really knowing that you can be, have been victimized and um, in that sense, and that is not what you own, but knowing that this is what happened to you and being able to unstep away from that is really important. So really kind of, this is a tough one. This ownership place is really, really tough because um, it requires us to see where we've been buying into different ideas, where we have been choosing to stay stuck, which always makes me feel really frustrated when I see that. Um, yes, love this, you are not what, yeah, you did or what has happened to you. Um, this also in ownership is where a lot of movement can happen because when we start to own our experiences, own our past selves, really kind of just say, okay, I'm gonna own it and I'm gonna move forward, we can take action to change it. This is really about empowering ourselves because we can't always change things, right? I cannot change that I got divorced. I cannot change that I've been divorced twice, but I can change the perception of what it means to be a woman who's been divorced twice and all the negative things that kind of come along with that, the, you know, I can't ha hold a relationship, all those shame stories and kind of things. Like I can be responsible for working through that and not holding that story to be true and really going, I was like doing a different story of owning the story the, that I made a choice not to stay in a relationship with that was no longer functioning for me. And that's actually really healthy. And it's not something to be ashamed of. So really sometimes you, when you're going through those adverse times, owning the opposite of what you're feeling guilt or shame around really helps you feel better about your situation. So, um, we can own the stories we tell. So this is really about owning the stories we tell and the meaning we are signing to the experiences and really allowing ourselves to be more empowered. So kind of how this works is when you go through an adverse experiences, allowing yourself to feel your way through it, all the way through it. This is about really allowing yourself to open up to your emotions, to reflecting, to holding space for yourself, to getting help, um, and I'd love to know if there's questions I'll kind of flip through because we do have about eight minutes left. Um, but this is really about being able to be with yourself in all of yourself. And so when you're moving through adversity, finding your purpose really is about allowing yourself to heal, to fall apart, to grow, and to nurture the spaces of yourself that need to be nurtured. And when you do this, you open up possibility to see what else is possible for yourself. So I'm gonna scroll through really quick. If you have questions, drop them below. I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss any questions. Um, okay. Okay, so, oh, brave face, yes. So I love that you said that. I'm next um, to doing this with my husband. Um, feeling very blessed because with most people we put on a brave face, right? Yes, this is a huge thing. Um, when this is kind of goes back in that honesty and kind of even that open heartedness and really kind of, if somebody asks you how you're doing, a lot of times we're putting on a brave face and we could be going through so much shit and we could be like, oh, I'm okay. I'm doing great. Things are awesome. And really they're not. And we put on this brave face to protect ourselves. So absolutely. I mean, Sometimes we need to in certain situations, but other times it's really important for us to be able to hold that space and just go, you know what? 
I'm not doing that great today. I don't really want to talk about it, but I need a little space just to like be with myself. And those are perfectly, um, you know, people will typically respect that. Okay, so I don't see any questions so far. Um, so just to kind of wrap up, when you are going through this process, there's a lot of things happening. Healing and growth and evolving, finding your purpose are all things that are going to be kind of like all over the place. It's a, like a web and you're constantly going through or even a labyrinth where you're going in different directions trying to find what works for you but the truth is that you will find your way when you trust yourself and this is really about the more honest you are with yourself the more empathetic you are with the, yourself the more that you allow yourself to be honored in the spaces the more that you are going to feel comfortable in showing up in a new way and that is going to help you find your purpose it's about being kind and patient with yourself and really allowing yourself to feel because i'm going to be honest there is no quick way through life there are people who try to tell us there are shortcuts or you know this or that it's not true the only way out is through. And you have to go through this maze, through this web, through your life experiences in order to grow, in order to evolve. And it's this constant evaluation, not in like a critical way, but in this compassionate, mindful way of how did that feel? What did I want to, what do I want to take from that? And how do I want to proceed forward? And when we start looking at those things working together, how do I feel? What did I take from that? How do I want to move forward? Those things are going to help us feel more connected to ourselves and help us find our purpose in life because it may still be the same purpose but it's going to help us stay grounded and we might find out new things about ourselves. We might grow in new ways. In fact, I guarantee you will. Um, I had no idea when I married the person that I did that I would be where I am today. And that's part of the beauty of growth and part of the beauty about the evolution of our life is that we get to see things differently. We get to change we get to evolve and you know one of the other things that i think is really important you know part of my background is really looking at trauma and the impact of trauma on people and i've done um, i was a trauma therapist for a really long time is that our memories are living and evolving and and kinds of real things and so every time we work on memory it's shifting a little bit and so our Life is constantly changing, our memory is constantly evolving, and we get to choose what that looks like. So what do you want to remember about each one of your experiences? What do you want to take away? And when you start owning that, when you start really giving it the space to look at of what lesson do I really want this to tell me about myself, to tell me about who I am, to tell me about how to be in a relationship, do I want it to feel disempowered or do I want to feel empowered and embodied in a way that I feel confident about myself. And if I want that, then what do I need to do for myself? And this is really, again, where that practice of honesty, really kind of getting connected, finding someone to talk to, to work with if you struggle doing it with yourself. I am a big chronic, I'll do it myself -er, but I have learned the value of finding really powerful people to help hold space for me because it's also easy for me to get caught up in my head. You know, those stories just kind of spiral down. So, um, okay, I don't see any questions, but if you come on later, you're watching the replay, hashtag replay, go ahead and um, drop your questions. I will come back on and answer all of them. I appreciate all of you. I am offering as part of my um, master class, if you would like to work with me or know what it's like to work with me and have an exploration call of anything that relates to this or um, anything that you're working on that you would like to. I am a coach and I will put the link, but I am offering free exploration calls to all of you. So, 
All right, I hope you have a fabulous, fabulous rest of your day. Um, I don't see any questions and I think we are ending just on time. Um, but I appreciate all of you and I really hope that you have a wonderful day and thank you for being with me. Keep being bravely you.